Welcome inside our Mountaineer Game Day studios. Angelica Trenone and Nick Farrell here with you on a brand new episode of Mountaineer Game Day Extra. West Virginia coming off its second win of the season. That came over NC State on Saturday, while Kansas had a win 11 years in the making over Boston College. That will be WVU's opponent this weekend. But before we get into that West Virginia KU matchup or talk about NC State, we'll give you a little bit of an injury update in the guys that we could or could not be seeing this weekend. So last week, West Virginia Virginia's offensive lineman Mike Brown and Josh Sills did not play a shoulder injury for Sills and a sickness there for Mike Brown. There was also somebody that we didn't see, Tevin Bush. He was suspended for a violation of team rules for that game up against NC State, but two other guys to keep an eye out um, on the offense as well. One's a running back and one's a wide receiver. Sean Ryan is the wide receiver in question. He was injured in the second half of that game against NC State. Coach Brown says his status is up in the air just as Josh Sills' status will be for the Big 12 opener at Kansas. Uh, Ryan did participate in the team's walkthrough through on Monday, so that's a positive sign. We'll see if he's going to play and make the trip to Kansas. The other player is Martel Petaway. He didn't have a carry in the win over NC State, but Coach Brown uh, reassured the media this week at his weekly press conference saying that it's not an injury, it's not a suspension. The quote was, Petaway's not in the doghouse. They just didn't go to him uh, against NC State, and the reasoning for that was Kennedy McCoy got hot. Letty Brown made his return from injury, and he was the guy, the physical back that West Virginia relied on there in the fourth quarter. You also saw Logan Timmons in the backfield. Uh, tight end playing a little bit of a lead blocking role there late in the game to help salt it away for West Virginia. So th that's the story of why Petaway didn't play. He'll likely be back with the team uh, and, and maybe back on the field as quickly as the Kansas game. So that's your injury update. Still waiting to see if Mike Brown and Josh Sills will play for West Virginia this week. Looking likely, according to head coach Neil Brown, that Mike Brown will play. Josh Sills is going to have to be a midweek decision. Uh, but either way, one of the good signs from that North Carolina State victory uh, or victory over North Carolina State is the fact that West Virginia now seems to have some depth on its offensive line. Yeah, Bryson Mays going in there, making his first start at center. We had a chance to talk to him earlier in the week, and he had said when he found out, I don't remember if he said either Wednesday or Thursday, but it was later in the week that he would be taking over that role. He said the first thing that he did, he went back to his apartment. He lives with Trey Lowe, um, listed there as one of West Virginia's quarterbacks, and he said, Trey, one thing that I'm not very familiar with is snapping the ball. Center is not his natural position. And he would said props to Trey Lowe for his good start because Trey just spent hours with him snapping the football inside of the hallway and he said we had to do it in close quarters I needed to make sure it hit Trey's hands right so nice uh, story there to see these two young guys helping each other out especially in a big moment there for Bryce and Mays but West Virginia's run game really the story in this one 173 yards almost tripling its production from what we saw out of week one and week two and a lot of that had to do with the offensive line and some changes there three new faces making starts that uh, in including Mays and when you looked their pregame and you saw that Mike Brown and Josh Sills, because that was announced just a little bit before kickoff, that mm -hmm. wasn't something that we knew going in that they wouldn't play. When you saw that those guys weren't going to be in there, you would thought, well, West Virginia's offensive line has already struggled a little bit this season. Now, without two of its veterans, what is it going to look like? I think the young guys stepped up big, and, and they did their job. And Coach Brown had said the one thing that changed this week is the guys did what they were coached to do, and that is what he did not see at Missouri. The story about Mays with uh, Trey Lowe is an incredible story because you heard uh, offensive coordinator Matt Moore talking about Mays before the game, saying that Mays had a bunch of bad snaps, four or more in warm-ups. And Moore was saying to himself, like, geez, I don't really know how this is going to go. But he, he went up to Mays before the game and said, don't worry, you're going to be fine. And, and sure enough, he was. Well, one thing I want to add there, too, somebody asked him, they said, who was the first call whenever you found out you got the start? He said, of course, I called my mom. I called my yeah, mom awesome. and told her. And she, he, he says, mom already said whether you're starting or not, we will be at every West Virginia game. So you can believe she was there more proud to see her son starting. He said after the game, he talked to mom tears happened after that start. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Said, it's a yeah. great story for him. There's been a lot of great stories so far for WVU this year. One of the guys that's really developing is Sam James into, into a, quite the story for WVU. Redshirt freshman had 212 all-purpose yards 
over 150 receiving yards to lead all players for West Virginia. Matt Moore was talking last week about finding some erasers. It's become pretty clear that James is going to be that guy for WVU out of the wide receiver core. He had so many great plays, including a jet sweep. We saw it against Missouri. It popped up again against NC State. Popped off for a huge play that ultimately led to West Virginia's second touchdown. James has really proven himself as one of the more athletic guys on West Virginia's offense in a team that was really searching for that go-to guy. Maybe he's going to turn into Austin Kendall's favorite target for the season. Well, we had heard through spring and fall that Sam James was going to be that mm -hmm. big play guy for West Virginia. They're talking about the receiving core. It was TJ Simmons and Sam James being the top guy. So great to see that we finally got to see what the coaches had been seeing out of them all offseason. And Coach Matt Moore said the same thing, that that potential was there in Sam James. Just some other things needed to happen in order for him to be able to showcase his talent. Something Tony Caridi and I talked about last week. I asked him on a Mountaineer game day. How critical is one explosive play for this West Virginia offense? He said that he thought that's really what it needed to get going, and you saw that with the 51-yard play there by Sam James. We talked to him after the game, and he had said that is his role. He wants to be a big playmaker for this team, and something that I've seen going around all over Twitter as well, people saying there's another number 13 in town. David Sills used to wear that number. He is actually the guy who said that he agrees with it. Sam James really just out there representing. He's a guy that we're going to have this weekend coming up on the Neil Brown Show, so you're going to want to make sure to tune in for that. But West Virginia's offense really just impressed. And then, of course, there were some other guys on the defensive end that impressed as well, mainly Dante Stills, who just week in and week out is just really showing his improvement. Yeah, he's having a great season so far. Two sacks, three total tackles uh, against NC State. Really, the D-line was kind of in question, you know, who's going to step up uh, in, in wake of an injury to Taj Alston. And even though uh, you know, we, we've seen some great play up front from those guys, especially in week one when West Virginia recorded four sacks. Didn't see that same type of production against Missouri, but really led by Dante Stills, WVU's defensive front played extremely well. Not only getting to the quarterback, but getting in the way of some passes. A lot of batted balls at the line of scrimmage this year. Uh, one of the stats that's being tossed around right now is West Virginia is in the top two or three nationally in pass deflections. That's not just the cornerbacks. It's the guys up front, too that have been making a ton of really, really good plays at the line of scrimmage. So very important to see that moving forward as we uh, go into this Big 12 opener against Kansas. You know, we just talked about the Missouri game. West Virginia seemingly didn't travel very well at Mizzou. 31-point loss. Had that redemption against NC State in a very inspired performance. But Kansas is proving not to be that automatic win that the Jayhawks have been in the past. WVU five straight victories against Kansas over the last five seasons, but Kansas coming off a 24-point win over Boston College. Neil Brown says it's imperative that WVU keeps its focus this week going into its Big 12 road opener. I think going on the road, it's just about having a mature approach, and you can't, you can't lose your focus. You're not in your, you know, Football players and coaches are so routine oriented, and when you go on the road, it's you're not you're out of routine. You're not staying at the same place. You don't know the locker room, all those kind of things. So I think it's about being mature and handling it, understanding that none of that really matters once the ball is kicked. You can hear much more from Coach Brown as well as that interview Angelica alluded to with wide receiver Sam James. All coming up this weekend on the Neil Brown Show. Check your local listings for more details. We're going to bring you a couple segments with Coach Brown from the Encova Coaches Corner. Take a look around the Big 12 as conference play begins and take a look back at that win over NC State, a very memorable one at Milan Pushkar Stadium. But the focus now going forward, that road matchup with the Jayhawks in Lawrence and Angelica, you had a chance to get to know the Jayhawks a little bit better, chatting with somebody who knows them pretty well. We've got Sully Angles from KSNT joining us now here on Mountaineer Game Day Extra for more insight on this Kansas team. So, Sully, first I want to talk to you about that huge win for KU over Boston College last week. It looked like a completely different Kansas team than we have seen in this young season so far, losing 12-7 to Coastal Carolina and then bouncing back with that 48-24 win over Boston College in a game where KU was the underdog by three touchdowns. So what changed? for the Jayhawks up against the Eagles. Yeah, so it's really interesting. I think, you know, you come off a, a terrible loss, something that really kind of set Jayhawks fans and the program back a little bit, you know, kind of a repeat of what they've seen in the last couple of years. Then you go to Boston College, a game that basically everyone thought they were going to lose, 
And I don't know what happened during those five weeks, the short day of practice because they played on Friday, but something must have flipped. You know, the offense was a little different. They had spread wide receivers, which made it easier for the running backs to get going. Big games for both Puka Williams and Khalil Herbert. So as far as the on-field stuff, that was probably the biggest change in the offense. The defense has been pretty solid all year, but finally it kind of opened up a little bit. Better throws from Carter Stanley, not as many mistakes, which is really critical for this offense, and then those running backs just getting going. But in that locker room, whatever Les Miles had said to him, you know, some kind of magic sauce he gave him. But it was certainly a change that we haven't exactly seen yet, and I think we'll learn more about it as the season goes on as we enter Big 12 play. KU quarterback Carter Stanley had 238 yards. He was 24-27, three touchdowns and one interception in that performance up against the Eagles. But he also had some toughness about him as well, finished with a few big blocks for the Jayhawks. How important is that performance going to be, that confidence out of Carter Stanley, if the Jayhawks are going to try to get past the Mountaineers this weekend? Yeah, it's, it's extremely critical. I think he's got that swagger to him now. You know, the last couple of years, KU's really had a, a carousel there of quarterbacks. who was never sure who was going to start each week. Finally, he's kind of gotten the go from week one. Les Miles is stuck with him, just giving him that confidence. You know, we were just talking with Puka Williams. He calls him Super Stan, and he said that's his quarterback right there. So I think the team has a lot of confidence in him, too. They really believe that he's the dude to lead them right now. You know, he's been around the program. He's been through those years with David Biddy that were less than exceptional to be nice, and now he's ready to lead this team. And I think after, you know, a game-winning drive the first week, then a really tough performance week two, to go out week three, you know, and just bounce back from that and have the game that he did says a lot. So that'll be huge for the Jayhawks. Obviously, they want to run the ball. That's where their bread and butter is, running a defense. But Stanley, if you can avoid making mistakes, not turn the ball over, and just play consistent and get it out of some really talented wideouts that they do have, that's huge for the Jayhawks' success. Sully, you mentioned KU's ground game. You've got Puka Williams and Khalil Herbert, two guys that combined for over 300 yards in that win over the Eagles. What is it about this duo that makes them arguably the best in the Big 12 Conference? I think they're just two very talented running backs, obviously. Puka Williams, the quicker shift you're back. Khalil Herbert, more downhill on you, but they both really take advantage of their opportunities. And KU's been running these sets a lot where they're both out on the field it's almost like picking your poison. That's what they like to think about it as. It's Are you going to try and game plan for one or the other? Either way, whichever one you pick, they call it the wrong answer. So that's the big thing for them is getting them both out there. I think when they're both on the field, they have some of their most successful plays as far as you know, averaging yards and, and really getting those first downs, which is critical to shorten the field for them, I think. Those two running backs, they work really well off each other. They're good friends, and they want to see both uh, succeed. So they really kind of have a good dynamic going, and the offense is just fueled by their play. So I think when the offensive line is clicking like it was on Friday, that makes it a lot easier for them to just go out and worry about finding the holes, and, and they can take care of the rest from there. We've got Solly Ingles from KSNT joining us right here on Mountaineer Game Day with more on the Kansas Jayhawks. Solly, let's switch now to the other side of the ball. This Kansas defense shut out Boston College in the second half in that game over the weekend. What element does this defense bring that is going to provide a challenge for an inexperienced West Virginia offense? I think their biggest thing is they're just a confident group. They've been confident you know, since we've been at spring practice. They don't have any doubts about themselves, especially the secondary. You have guys back there like Mike Lee, Hassan Defense, Bryce Tordenaden, all really caliber, or cal have the ability to be Big 12-type guys, all Big 12-type guys. And I think they play with that kind of swagger out there in the secondary. That really gives the offense confidence. You know, it's kind of a whole thing. KU really runs on that defense. And for West Virginia, you know, an inexperienced group like you talked about, that's the biggest thing. This is the one – core group for KU that really has been there, has done that, been through the ups and downs. You know, the first game of the season, they literally willed them to victory, and they're not afraid to do that. You know, the offense plays with more confidence because they know the defense is going to be so good. So, for going up against, against West Virginia, I think it's interesting because you have two 2-1 two one teams coming into this. Both teams have first-year head coaches, so they're really just starting to figure themselves out. And to go into Big 12 play, both 2-1, both coming off really solid victories, I think that the defense is going to be critical for both sides, but KU's veteran leadership there really kind of gives them that advantage in that sense. And I think they're going to really lean on that, especially in the Big 12 open opener, which they know, you know they haven't had much success in the Big 12 last you know, almost decade, basically. So they're trying to turn it around this year, and it's going to start with that secondary. 
Now a similarity between West Virginia and Kansas, both welcoming new coaching staffs. Les Miles, the new man in charge there of the Jayhawks, and Solly, from what I understand, much like what Neil Brown is doing here at West Virginia, there has been a culture change at Kansas in the time that Les Miles has arrived. Yeah, I mean, you walk into the, you know, the press conference room, the biggest thing you see on the wall there is culture. Spelled with a KU here in Lawrence, obviously that's what they want to kind of bring in. It's a, it's a new era, and you know we've talked about that so much over the summer since his hire. Obviously you had the ESPN Plus series that's been following less around in the whole program. And I think that's what it really feels is like, you know, you, you look at KU basketball, it's it's like the Lakers, you know, they, they have all the media they want there, ESPN's there every week, and they're trying to kind of turn the tide and get that to KU football as well. So you bring in a big time guy like Les Miles, he's going to bring, you know, just a, an extra set of kind of just eyes everywhere on you now. And I think the team has, has really reacted well to that. You know, you kind of uh, hit that fight or flight, you know, mechanism within yourself and they're definitely, they're fighting now and they know that people are watching and they know that people care people here in Lawrence really you know want to have a good football team now they feel like they have the coach to do it so it's been up to the players to really embrace that and they're starting to do that I think they got some star power on this team um, they play with confidence you know despite that loss they didn't let that affect them you know they, they really put that aside and obviously go out and have that big win that's been the biggest difference for Les Miles it felt like in the past things really snowballed you know you had one of those tough non-con losses and it was almost over now it's, you get over a terrible loss Go on the road, have a huge win. I don't know if a KU team a year ago, five years ago, would have been capable of doing that, but that's kind of the Les Miles factor. You know, there have been questions about his style, but the staff he's brought in seems to be amazing. Uh, the players love them. They're really bought into what they're trying to do here, and that's going to just lead to success. If everyone's on the same page with the team they are now, you got to get things rolling eventually, and they're certainly bringing in the talent to do it as well. All right, Sully, we appreciate the insight on West Virginia's opponent. Look forward to catching up with you in Lawrence this weekend. Something that Sully and I did talk about, Nick, um, in that conversation up against the Jayhawks, he had said that Kansas is expecting this to want to be one of the biggest crowds that they have really had in the past couple years. Uh, West Virginia's atmosphere certainly played into that game last week as the Mountaineers hosted NC State. And when we were there in 2017, not the atmosphere that Kansas is certainly expecting this weekend. Yeah, right. 24,000 fans, less than that, uh, attended West Virginia's last meeting out at Kansas. And you can say what you want about how WVU didn't necessarily finish that game very well. Uh, I had to double check the box score to get that stat. And I think the last time that WVU hosted Kansas, it was more like 57,000 close to capacity at Milan Pushkar Stadium. It's a pretty, pretty drastic difference, but you know, Coach Brown alluded to it earlier today that there's a lot of excitement, just like there's a lot of excitement in Morgantown surrounding a new staff and a new era. You just mentioned it with Sully. Same kind of thing happening under Les Miles out in Lawrence with the Jayhawks looking leading into a new era, coming off their first road victory against a Power 5 opponent in 48 tries. I mean, that stat right there is mind-boggling. And we mentioned this earlier on, that this has been really the the victory that WVU fans, when they see the schedule, they're like, okay, Kansas, yeah, that's the one, right? That's Mark that in as a W right away. But that is not the case this year. And, and so uh, it's definitely not the case this year because of the way that Kansas has really turned things around under Les Miles and, of course, that dynamic running game uh, that, that you mentioned a few moments ago. Although West Virginia really handled Puka Williams last year, only gave up 65 yards to him and just over 100 to Kansas total the last time these two teams met. But very different scenario this year. Yeah, you talk about just the excitement with both programs. I mean, both teams coming off uh, two weeks ago, a loss that they were disappointed in, like I said, 12 to 7 to Coastal Carolina for Kansas in a game to where the Jayhawks really just couldn't get anything going. Then you've got West Virginia's loss at Missouri. Both teams certainly rebound, it rebounded and showed improvement there heading into their week three matchup. And just the one thing to look at, Kansas is 2 and 1 right now, a team mm -hmm. that only won three games last season. So certainly Les Miles is doing some wonders there for this KU program. I know we're looking forward to seeing what the atmosphere is going to be like in Lawrence this weekend. That is where Nick and I will be for a brand new episode of Mountaineer Game Day. Now, of course, we will be there pretty early, so don't expect the uh, stadium to be too rocking at 10 a.m., but make sure to join us there for Mountaineer Game Day from 10 to noon. And then, of course, we will have a new episode of the Neil Brown Show coming your way as well. That one on Saturday at 9 a.m. But, of course, always make sure to check your local listings and we will have you covered on Saturday up till West Virginia's game up against Kansas. That one's scheduled for a 4.30 Eastern time kick. And another person that we would like to thank here on Mountaineer Game Day Extra, the Varsity Club, because now we're coming to you with some very full bellies.
That's right, Angelica. A great spread provided by the Varsity Club. Catering services for MGD Extra provided by the Varsity Club Sports Tavern of Morgantown. They are treating us well. I mean, check that it out. That Firehouse Burger is no joke. Oh, yeah. I've, it, I've still got the heat. Like seriously. You, yeah. I that had was the very Reuben, spicy, was really those good. jalapenos. What were the, the, um, the tr truffle Garlic, fries? Yeah, truffle fries. Yeah, they were super good, too. But Angelica was really, really struggling today <laughs> with that burger. You guys yeah, should have gotten hard. Philly cheesesteak. Good. Do that, I, would, I mean, yeah, that looked very good. I'm barely awake right now. I'm barely <laughs> well, awake. We right appreciate now. you being awake, and we appreciate you bringing us some questions. I took a shot of espresso. We're good. <laughs> it's we're Sam good. Coniglio, <laughs> by the way, back here to shamelessly plug his Twitter handle again. Got to get that clout. They do anything for clout, <laughs> as they say. But we've got questions. Here we go. Much different football team in week three as opposed to week two. But as always, a lot of curiosity around the Mountaineers. Um, one of the biggest talking points on social media, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the biggest talking points on social media after the game was that last point after try, you know, the PAT, mm -hmm. where the Mount Mountaineers kneeled it instead of kicking it. Nick, you were talking to Neil Brown at the teleconference on uh, Monday. That's right. Uh, what did he say about that? Yeah, so this is a play that a lot of fans were really perplexed by, and Angelica and I kind of talked about it after the fact. Uh, so instead of answering, the, giving the reason for why West Virginia chose to kneel it on that final point after uh, late in the fourth quarter, this is why Neil Brown decided to do it from his weekly teleconference earlier this week. Well, it's just we, we use a data analytics company and they give you different scenarios in the game. And so that, that put us up 17. So at that point, the extra point does you no good. It does. There's there's no difference in 17 and 18 point game. Um, but worst case scenario happens, an extra point's blocked. They run it back. Now it's a two possession game. Now you bring, now you bring the ability for them to score, kick an onside kick. So um, it, it may be unorthodox, but it makes a lot of sense. So there's the answer. WVU goes on to win 44-27. And even though it's kind of insignificant, right, it's just one point late in the game. West Virginia's defense shut NC State down in that fourth quarter, only gave up six points the entire second half. So it was really never a question of, is the Wolfpack going to come back and win this game? But when you think about the way that Neil Brown talks about analytics, uh, as a fan, I think that that's a, that's a really good sign for the future. Because while this may have been something that was seemingly a, a very, very – small aspect of the game, maybe somewhere down the line, Coach Brown is going to use these these figures, this data, to make different decisions, smarter decisions than other coaches in the Big 12 would, maybe take more educated gambles at certain points in the game, right? And coaches uh, talk a lot about analytics, but to see them in use, that's a really positive thing. Yeah, Coach Brown said short and simple. It's unorthodox, but it makes sense. It makes sense to him, so certainly we got to listen to what West Virginia's head coach is doing there. He had said after his press conference on Tuesday, he stepped away from the podium and was like, come on, guys, nobody brought it back up to me. Nobody <laughs> asked. So then somebody said, well, have you ever had it happen? Have you ever had a PAT blocked and run back? And he said no and quickly walked out the door because now we definitely don't even want to jinx that. Yeah, but you talk about it. analytics, something that I was thinking about when people were just talking about this all over Twitter. If you go back to something we talked about last year with head baseball coach Randy Mazie, analytics was something that they really oh, yeah. relied on, and it's something that really helped Alec Manoa and the rest of the guys find the strike zone as well. So I think while a lot of people are not a huge fan of analytics, we've seen it kind of coming into play more here at WVU, first with the baseball team and then now, of course, with Coach Brown. So like you said, could be um, some analytics that come in and help this team later in the future. So let's put that kneeling on the PAT to rest. For yeah, now. right. That's what I say. At least he's looking at the details, you know? Yeah. Um, moving on a little bit more bigger picture from Jeff Fleeman on Facebook. He wants to know, what do you guys think about the overall improvement of the team in, from week two to week three? I was impressed. I thought improvement all around the board from offense to defense, and especially, again, something that I feel like we just keep bringing up, but you have to, with all the inexperience that is on this WVU team right now, not a lot of veterans, but I thought that it was a, a big improvement in almost every area. I mean, we saw Austin Kendall looking more confident. I think he had 33 rushing yards. We saw him get out there in the open field as well. Some of the guys were talking about, too, the two blocks that he had had. Coach Moore said yeah. maybe that one of him running into 92 on the defensive line we kind of want to forget about. But we're seeing some, some different 
stuff out of these guys, and I think that it really comes with confidence. You talk about mm. Sam James. He looked a lot more confident. And Kennedy McCoy, while he is somebody who is a veteran for West Virginia, I think he looked completely different in this game up against um, NC State. And in the fact that he seemed more confident, too. And, and I know it's, it's hard for us, you know, to, we're, we're here on the outside looking in, but if you're him and Martel Petaway, it was kind of hard not to get down after those first couple games. I mean, right. everybody just harping on this, this lack of run game that West Virginia had, but I thought the way that Kennedy came back and, and he really, he had a really great game, was able to score there a couple touchdowns. And I just feel like with the guys just overall, especially defensively, I think that they looked a lot more confident in not only their talent, but they looked a lot more confident in what they were doing and what was expected of them. And I think that that, that to me was the main thing that really showed out there um, up against the Wolfpack. For me, the you know the biggest improvement on paper is West Virginia's offense putting up 173 rushing yards, by far a season high. But if you want to look at one specific area of why that rushing attack was more successful in week three, I think it has to be the physicality. Something that the coaching staff has really harped on throughout the season as early as fall camp and, and even the spring and summer, uh, that West Virginia needs to be physical and aggressive it, all across the field, not just the offensive line, but the running backs who are hitting holes and making cuts, uh, the quarterback who's making reads, the wide receivers who are blocking on the perimeter. I mean, Kendall going downfield to block on a couple of occasions proves that there was a lot more buy-in in that regard this week in particular. Uh, you even saw Kendall scrambling for big yardage himself on a couple of occasions, uh, so maybe we're going to start calling Austin Kendall <laughs> a dual-threat quarterback here sometime soon. I, I don't know about that, but uh, I think the physicality overall uh, from West Virginia, just the grit, the toughness that West Virginia exhibited in this game uh, on offense is, is incredibly positive and probably the biggest step forward overall. One other thing, West Virginia has really wrecked some plays on yeah. special teams this season, and that's huge. I mean, Coach Brown always talks about turnovers and special teams, takeaways and special teams being two of the more important phases or aspects of a football game. But when you think about how that Logan Timmons block really just turned the game on its head for a moment for West Virginia, gave WVU all kinds of momentum, uh, just like Darius Stills field goal block in week one. Short takeaways are the very obvious important thing, but the way that WVU has played on special teams and made some explosive plays that's been huge, and hopefully it continues to be a theme for WVU because when you go into some of these games like against nationally ranked Texas or Oklahoma, games that are coming up very shortly in October, those are the types of moments that could put West Virginia in position to pull off a huge upset. So hopefully we continue to see those things. WVU fans will love to see. Well, two guys, too, that we haven't really talked about yet, the play of Kerry Martin and Ty Key Smith, sure. two newcomers for WVU, really filling in there on the secondary. Kerry Martin going in after Josh Norwood was ejected for targeting um, a guy who was the quarterback at Capitol now playing on the other side of the ball and Ty Key Smith had five tackles I, I believe Kerry Martin had three I may maybe have those numbers flipped there but I asked West Virginia's defensive coordinator Vic Coning about the play of Ty Key Smith he's a guy that we've heard his name really increasing here over the past couple games past couple games he had some big plays there against the Wolfpack he had said you would have thought that we had just won the Super Bowl the way that I went in there squirting water all over Ty Key Smith because that's how happy I was at the play that he made so kind of what we were both talking about really just the the improvement comes from these young guys really buying in and really stepping up if you yep. look at some of the key playmakers that West Virginia has had this season now while they really don't have a choice because that is what West Virginia has right now I thought that these young guys have really impressed. Uh, Ollie Jennings went in, had a touchdown. Winston Wright making his first career start as well. So I think a lot of this is the young guys just really buying in. They're playing with physicality, and it, it's been a lot of fun. Now, that Missouri game will just but it was a lot of fun watching that improvement from week two to week three out of West Virginia's young well, guys. Sorry, Angelica. One more thought on this is that the thing the thing about improvement like that, that's, that's kind of difficult to gauge is how good are these teams that WVU is facing, really, right? J James Madison could be a national championship contender in the FCS. Missouri's week one loss to Wyoming could be really one of its only blemishes so far this season. Uh, Mizzou's going to have somewhat of an easy schedule before taking on a couple of really tough SEC opponents later in the year, but who knows by that point the Tigers 
could really be competing to win their division in the SEC. And maybe it's going to turn out that NC State's first two wins against some, some really struggling opponents are going to be maybe some of its brighter moments as it goes into ACC play. Maybe the Wolfpack aren't going to be that same nine-win team that NC State has been the previous two years. So it's really hard to gauge yeah. this early on in the season, but I think that WVU having a 17-point win, an emphatic win, the way that the offense really got going and that the defense shut down NC State in the second half, those are really good signs for, for moving forward. That's why and, I got to trust the climb. That's right, bingo. Trust, trust the, the climb. climb. Look at that. Got to get that in there, right? All, it's all about social media clout, after <laughs> all, is. right? It really right? is. Hashtag trust the climb. Hashtag, speaking of hashtag, social media cloud, all that, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, at, send in your questions next week, come on, get on the show, help us out, we're going to have some fun, use the hashtag, AskMGDExtra, I point at it every single week, please utilize it, we're, we're, we're here, ready to answer your questions, this one is a little more important though, this one isn't really opinionated, right. a little bit of an issue coming in this weekend with the game, not exactly mm -hmm. on TV. Yeah, something a lot of people yeah. yeah wanted to know was how can they watch West Virginia's game um, at Kansas coming up this weekend. So, we've got the official list here. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to read it for you so then that way we are all on the same page here. So, this game up against KU will be on ESPN Plus um, on Big 12 now, which is on ESPN Plus. So, that is available via the ESPN app or you can go to ESPNplus.com. It is $4.99 per month, so you do have to pay... Um, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe you could kind of try have a free trial or there, try whatever. We're not uh, entirely yeah, sure. Supposedly there is an option to get yeah. a one week free trial of ESPN Plus that, that could be right. good to get you the game on Saturday. Right. Now it also says you can cancel it as any time um, as well. But so you're not really, from our understanding at least, um, not really going to be able to go maybe to your favorite places, watch this on TV. This is something that is going to be strictly online. And if you already have ESPN Plus, well, then you're already mm -hmm. a step ahead of the game there. But this is something that I think you probably shouldn't wait until like an hour before the game. You know, you maybe it. want yeah. to try it out. But it says here, um, most major uh, mobile connections platforms, you can get it on the iPhone, iPad, Android devices, Chromecast, what have you. So you can go to wvusports.com slash Big 12 now. You can get all of this information here as well. But the main thing to remember is it will not be on TV. It will only be available on ESPN+. Plus. And a lot of the games have not been announced on the, on the networks for coming up. And we don't right. know. Maybe this could be another platform we see West Virginia That's on right. for the future. It even says down here, too, um, some basketball games and everything right. might be starting here in 2019. So, so maybe something that West Virginia fans, you know, you can get now and utilize for um, the rest of the season. Only 50 bucks per year. So Right. So, the, yeah, the key thing to remember is that it's $4.99 per month. But if you want to get an annual subscription, you do save yeah. money. Uh, it's essentially you get two free months because it's only 50 bucks uh, for the entire year and as Angelica just mentioned when we were at Big 12 media days they kind of introduced this the conference did saying that this is going to be um, the home of certain sporting events going forward uh, and that could include WVU basketball later on this year uh, it could include another WVU football game we don't know that for a fact but do keep an eye out on it and of course uh, we're going to keep you updated on all scheduling updates at wvillustrated.com and on the West Virginia Illustrated app. So anytime there's more information about ESPN Plus or where the Mountaineers are going to be playing on cable, uh, you can find it right on our website as well. And by the way, if you love soccer, if you love Serie A Calcio, right, Sam? Come on, man. ESPN Plus, sense. baby. Boom. Love always it. Comes back oh, go away. Go and, away. And back to ESPN Plus, I think, too. Isn't it Oklahoma State, Kansas State this weekend? Yeah, I, I think I've, next weekend, right? When do, when do they play? It's an uh, upcoming it game, right? Up, okay, so next week. But they're also going to be on ESPN Plus. Um, so I, I've seen some fans from those – I've seen some people from those fan bases and in those media media talking about it. So don't think that this is just something right. that they see West Virginia and Kansas and they and they put it on there. This is going to be the case for some teams um, down the road. I, I don't think um, you know it's a, a slight at either of these teams. Just seems to be the way that things are going now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the way the Big 12 is moving with ESPN Plus moving forward. So um, that's it for me, guys. I'm, I'm all, all set. Right. No more questions. All right, no Sam, you demand. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. And remember, of course, get your questions to Sam every week on MGD Extra. Use the hashtag AskMGDExtra. He's pointing to it, as always, at Sam Caniglia. Are you going to plug yourself again here? No? At Sam Caniglia. That's it. Hit me boy. All Hit right. Me a follow. Wolfman coming up here with his weekly how. Wolf, take it away. 
This is your MGD Extra in the Wolf's <laughs> Howl, baby. Yeah, I know you like that. All right, me and my clicker and the howl. You can't get any better. Hey, this week I want to go on with Reese Donahue here. He's a pure senior, four year guy, never red shirted. He's 6'4, 285 pounds. He is a team leader. He's a very good technician. He hustles everywhere he goes. Everything he does, whether it's outside of football, inside of football, he is a great defensive leader. Not only defensive leader, he's a great team leader. So let's check out Reese here in the Mizzou game. Okay, he's gonna come out, and you're gonna see him here. He's battling right here. He's got good, look at look at this tech, his technique right here. He's got hands inside, he's fighting, he's trying to look in the backfield, see what's going on with the running back right here. So again, we're, we're gonna roll it right here. Okay, now he's gonna throw the guard down here, and it's gonna be a good job here. But watch, okay? What's he doing? He is running to the ball. Again, Mr. Hustle, Reese Donahue, making a tackle. Very good. Let's check out the end zone shot right here. Coming in. He's gonna come off the ball. Very nice. Okay, he's a three technique here. Look at his hands. That's very good. Again, what does he do? He throws the guard to the ground. He comes up. Now, he makes the tackle downfield, but that wasn't his fault. Okay. But again, he's finishing. He's hustling. Let's go ahead, take a look here at the next play with Reese. Very nice job. He's gonna do it right here. So check this out. He comes up. Oh, this is a great example of who Reese Donahue is right here. Okay, so he's fighting here, big old left tackle, right? He's big, 300 pounder, very long. What he does, he gets off of him here, and he's gonna fill in, so guess what? Quarterback is not gonna be able to go there, okay? Check it out, now watch him hustle. Here he comes, here he comes, look at him, he's running, running, running. Oh yeah, there's a Brian Kelly right there, makes the tackle. Reese Donahue, I tell you, I love this kid for four years. He's turned into a, a man. And he, he's out there, he's playing football, and he's doing a great job. And that, my friends, is your MGD Extra, you know what, of the week. Boom! All right, Wolfman, thanks as always. A good note about MGD Extra, very exciting for us. You can now watch our program every week on the WVU Athletics channel on Roku and Apple TV. So search for West Virginia Athletics on either of those devices. You can find MGD Extra right there every week as well as on our Facebook page and on our website, WVIllustrated.com. Remember that this week's game between WVU and Kansas is streaming only as well. That game can be found on ESPN+. Plus. For more information on how you can watch that game and sign up for a subscription membership to ESPN+, Plus, Check out our website, WVIllustrated.com, or download the West Virginia Illustrated app. And while you're on your favorite device checking out our website, be sure to follow us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for complete coverage as we lead you right up to Saturday's kickoff between the Jayhawks and the Mountaineers. Well, while you're on your favorite device, make sure to head on over to your favorite website. Of course, that's got to be WVIllustrated.com, right? So that's where we will have all of our information leading up to this game. We will have sound bites from some of the players, uh, the assistant coaches, and we will have more on this West Virginia-Kansas game coming your way in our daily WV Illustrated reports as well. And of course, make sure to join us this weekend for a brand new episode of the Neil Brown Show. That's coming your way on Saturday at 9 a.m. And then Nick and I will be live from Lawrence, Kansas, while Scott and Amanda will be right here in our Mountaineer Game Day studio for another live edition of Mountaineer Game Day. So hopefully whenever we see you back here next week, we will be talking about a West Virginia team that is three and one. So we look forward to you joining us then right here on Mountaineer Game Day Extra. Ready for this? Oh, I forgot Got mine. cool paper this time. Let's see how one, it goes. Two. Hey, that wasn't too bad. Mine that was better last week, actually. <laughs> mine, mine didn't work. Mine went back.